Hello, my name is David Bradburn, and I'm here today to demonstrate for you Kurzweil 3000 version 13 for Windows, the newest version of Kurzweil 3000 announced in October of 2011. If you're familiar with Kurzweil, then you already know that it is a literacy tool for struggling students who need assistance in the areas of reading and writing. What you don't know is that Kurzweil 3000 has been around actually since the mid-1990s and has continually improved over the years. And at the same time we announced version 13 of Kurzweil 3000, we informed the general public of the ability of a product called Firefly, a new web-based solution which doesn't require that any software be installed at all. All you need is access to the internet and a web browser, and you're able to access uh, materials and get some of the same supports that we have in Kurzweil 3000. That will become commercially available in the uh, first quarter of 2012. I'll be showing that product a little bit later because you can, in fact, use the two together. First, let's focus on Kurzweil 3000. So again, we're here over version 13, which is the version of Kurzweil for Windows. The Macintosh version, it is called Kurzweil 3000 version 5 among uh, all versions of Kurzweil is the ability to open up virtually any electronic or digital uh, content. So, for example, a PDF file, a Word document, that sort of thing. One of the things that you can also do with Kurzweil 3000, however, is the, is the ability to scan in materials that only exist in print. I'm going to just close the tip of the day that you see on the screen here. And attention to the toolbar at the top of the screen. Buttons has the word scan and a pictorial image of a scanner with the lid open. That is a scan button, and I actually have a scanner attached to my computer right now. I'm going to go ahead and click that button. While it's doing its thing, you'll notice in the lower left corner of the screen it says that color scanning is beginning. And which will increase to show you that progress is being made. Once finished scanning this document, and that document will appear on the screen. If it's upside down, it will rotate it the right way up. If there is more information on the uh, on the document, that will be applied, so it comes up in black and white at first. Then uh, information, and here it is. This is actually the uh, the brochure or flyer, Firefly product I was uh, I was mentioning earlier. Is that it looks like just like the the print version, so where there are pictures, you're going to see that on the document, where there are specific types of font or colors that are used, those are also going to be present. So everything that was intended by the publisher to be important for the reader will be accessible with Kurzweil 3000. And here's how easy it is. To click at the beginning of the paragraph beneath the picture, I'm going to come to the Read button on the toolbar up above, and I click and let it read this paragraph to us. Fly provides anytime, anywhere access to digital, text-based content. Supported by powerful literacy tools that enable individuals with the cognitive ability, but the literacy skills, to achieve academic success alongside their peers. So I'm going to put right there and just scroll up again. So it's just that as reading was taking place, uh, dual highlighting occurring. This is actually a patented feature of Kurzweil 3000. And its ability to highlight the current spoken word in a contrasting color to the reading unit. The reading unit is, by default, set to highlight a sentence at a time. You can, however, as the reader, I'm just going to direct your attention once again to the toolbars up above. We do have the ability to customize that. So if we'd like to see fewer words being highlighted or more words being highlighted, we can do that. The other thing that you may have noticed is that the voice is not a human voice. It is, in fact, a computer-generated text-to-speech voice. It's because of this ability, uh, it being a computer-generated voice, that is, that allows Kurzweil 3000 to read virtually anything. Because essentially what's happening is the text-to-speech understands the phonetic rules of a given language and is able to pronounce those words with reasonably good accuracy. There are, of course, a couple of exceptions where words are either out of context or peoples and that sort of thing, can be mispronounced. But there is a pronunciation editor within the program that allows you to fix things like that as and when they may 
happen. So let's talk a little bit about that voice then. So, so I'm staying on the toolbars for a second. I'm going to, to click on the, uh, the reading voice drop down, and you'll see a list of voices. There's actually several reading personalities uh, that come with Kurzweil. And I scroll all the way to the top, you'll see there's actually probably well in excess of 30 of them here. And so what it us to do is to choose a voice that we like to listen to the best. So if you didn't actually like the VW Paul voice that we were just listening to, we can, for example, switch to Julie. So she's in the same uh, manufacturer, um, but it's a female voice. Let's listen to, uh, to Julie do some reading for us. Cognitivity, but not literacy skills to which academic success alongside. So I'm going to pause right there. So again, we have this, uh, you know, the dual highlighting, just as I said. And one of the things that I am also able to do then as I'm reading along, having now um, specified, you know, a particular voice that we want, is I can actually click on a literacy. given voice. The voice can then be uh, spoken to us. And if I need additional support as a student, with with uh, who struggles with reading, I have these word attack tools here. So, for example, dictionary. Dictionary provides us with uh, almost immediate access to uh, more than 170,000 definitions. Both the American Heritage Fourth Edition. We also include the American Heritage Children's Dictionary. We include a number of bilingual dictionaries which provide definitions in English and other supported languages such as Spanish. Definitions can, of course, be spoken to us. It's also um, possible to click on words within the definition and have those words defined as well. And to go back to uh, actually one of the female VW voices, I'll go to Kate on this occasion. As we are reading along, uh, sometimes you may find that the voice is reading too quickly for you or too slowly. A lot will depend on your reading ability, of course, but a lot, a lot of, will also depend on your familiarity with text-to-speech and perhaps your familiarity with the vocabulary. So if you determine that the voice is reading too quickly and you'd like to adjust it, you can do the words per minute option up here again on the top area. So right now it's reading at a default reading speed of 145 words per minute. Each click of these triangles going up and down, I can increase and decrease, decrease the reading speed. So it's very, very simple. I can also enter a speed just by typing it in and actually come down to my document and read it at that speed. ...of installation maintenance it's really kind of drawing out the, uh, the pronunciation of those words as it's reading to us. Bear in mind that, that there, there will come a point where you make it so slow that it's actually uh, almost defeats the purpose because you don't understand some of what it's saying that clearly. The reason that we actually go very slow, and you can in fact go as slow as 35 words per minute, is not so much because you may not understand the vocabulary, though that certainly is a benefit. It's for individuals' first language is not English, for example, where they're either learning English or perhaps they're a transient student from another country who just need a little bit more time to actually process the words that are being spoken to them. The other thing is when it comes to fluency. So then on the toolbar, I have a button that says Audible. I click that button, it changes to Silent. And what happens at this point is that the highlight is going to move along at my chosen rate of speech, which at this point is 65 words per minute, allowing me to read along. And if I hear a word, that, or excuse me, if I see a word that I don't understand or cannot pronounce myself, I can click the word Operates. and hear it. It's only click away and I'm actually actively reading that the voice is switched off. So I can then practice fluency either on my own with a schoolmate uh, or perhaps in front of my teacher so he or she can actually measure how well I'm able to do. And, of course, the fact that we're measuring the reading speed, and it is something that we also track as far as student progress is concerned, is something that you can easily document. So I'm going to go back to a rate of speech. We'll go back to our default speed. Um, the, uh, the features that are on the toolbars that you see here, by the way, are fairly self-explanatory. 
clearly things like creating a new file, opening and saving and things of that nature are things that we all do in many different applications, so nothing there um, that's out of the ordinary. There is one button that we will come back to look at a little bit later, and that is the Read the Web feature. That's the ability to read internet pages and actually have them highlighted as text is spoken. Um, although that I'm going to show you right now is the Translate button, and that is where I can come in and actually select some text, and I can do the Translate button. It's already detected that this is English, and I say I want to translate this to Spanish, for example. I click Translate. And here is our text translated into Spanish. I can, of course, have this text read to us. Kurzweil will automatically switch to a Spanish voice. Let's go. Flece en cualquier momento y para el acceso a la tecnología digital, contenido basado en texto. I'll stop it there. Just like the English voices, you can choose which Spanish voice you prefer to listen to. You can change the reading speed for the Spanish voices independently from the English voices. So, uh, you know, if your command of Spanish is stronger than English, you may, in fact, find yourself listening to that speech at a faster rate than you might the English text. So that translate um, feature. Something else that you need to know about um, the Kurzweil 3000 is the, the universal design for learning aspects of the program. Everything from the multiple means of representation to multiple means of expression, and most importantly, perhaps, to multiple means of engagement are all present in Kurzweil 3000. Of course, part of the universally designed for learning uh, solution is also making sure that Kurzweil and other product claiming to be the same is accessible by individuals with different abilities. Means, for example, that if the user happened to have a visual uh, impairment that prevented them from reading or seeing these words clearly at the present size, I can come to the zoom feature and very quickly and easily uh, enlarge the the image of what it is I'm seeing. And you'll see that this applies equally to the pictures as well as to the text on the screen. There are also options, of course, for reducing and as well as fitting to uh, to the width or of the screen, that sort of thing. So uh, again, very good for access. And although I'm not going to be demonstrating uh, these devices during this presentation, suffice to say that if you have um, a individual with physical um, needs, such as someone who's using a specialized keyboard to access the computer, or perhaps someone's using speech recognition like Dragon Naturally Speaking, we work very well with those products. And so you really can think of Kurzweil as a, as a tool or a solution for all students. Uh, on, the, uh, on the subject of other technology, I would like to add at this point that Kurzweil 3000 is also compatible with the leading interactive whiteboard manufacturers, such as those from Smart Technology, Promethean, and the like. So whole class instruction, uh, Kurzweil 3000 is in fact used um, at all grades from K-12 K and on into higher education and uh, really is a great tool for uh, interacting with the whole class. Which segues nicely into um, the next topic with regards to Swell 3000 and that is study skills. So going up to the toolbars, if I could direct everyone's attention to the upper left corner, you'll see some what I would describe as little Lego blocks. There's a red, yellow, green, and a blue, and each one belongs to a specific toolbar. So green, which I'm going to click on now, opens up the study skills toolbar. Now I'm actually practicing study skills right now, and I'm just focused on reading. I could, of course, just click the button again. It hides that toolbar just as easily as I made it appear. The blue toolbar, we'll come to this one a little bit later, is the writing toolbar, and it's another very strong component of Kurzweil 3000. And again, we'll come back to that later. Now, I wanted to have all four toolbars switched on at once. I could do. Uh, bear in mind, however, that the more toolbars you have switched on, the less real estate you ultimately have for viewing your documents. So it's a trade-off and one that um, individuals can decide upon for themselves. So let me uh, scroll down to my text. You'll notice on the study skills toolbar, from the left-hand side, I have a series of virtual 
highlight pens. We're only in four here. There are, in fact, eight different colors that you can choose from, two of which are actually circling tools. So there is a blue and red circling tool which you can use for either uh, highlighting multiple choice questions or answers or just circling um, particular vocabulary words that happen to be in the text. And as I go through the toolbar, I have different notes that I can add. For example, as a sticky note, which is like a virtual post-it note on screen. We also have the ability of filling out tests and worksheets, and I'll show you examples of that before we're done here today. Uh, we're all able to add voice notes, so these are actual recordings of ourselves speaking. Um, and we can go all the way through up to bubble notes. They're actually instructional notes that teachers can add to a document to provide guidance, instruction, or even ask questions of students that can then interact with and engage in the learning process more fully. We're going to focus on the highlighting for right now. So I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about whether I'm highlighting things um, that make a lot of sense here in the interest of time. I am going to select the yellow highlight by moving to that button and clicking to select it. And then I'm going to come and click and drag and just like Write some text. This first line of text, this is going to be my main idea. I'm going to select the green highlight because I want some uh, supporting tell. And so we've done. And then I'm going to highlight with a third color. And this is actually going to be used for actually highlighting uh, some vocabulary words that perhaps I'm going to work on a little bit later. So one, now this could have been something that perhaps I had modeled or worked on it within a whole class environment. Maybe if my students knew enough about highlighting to work on their own that I provided some instruction to the class, either inside the document itself or by just addressing the class as a whole and then having the students work in independently on their computer. We could have gone through the entire document, not just one page, but when I'm done with my highlighting for a moment that I'm a student who struggles with reading at grade level, there's a very strong likelihood that I'm going to struggle with writing as well. If that's the case, we would be pleased to know that we've added in a number of tools and other areas of functionality to help make the writing process easier for those types of individuals. I have a button here. It's the Extract Annotations button. And when I click it at the OK button, Kurzweil 1000 takes all of the words that I highlighted and create an outline for me. Just that it has indented the green and the blue. You'll notice that, that Roman numerals, letters of the alphabet, and numbers have been added to different pieces of highlighting to help with the, the layout of information. The options that can be changed in Kurzweil 3000. For example, if you would prefer to not have any numbering or lettering of the uh, text, that is fine. If you prefer that your main idea was numbered and your vocabulary words used Roman numerals, absolutely fine. You just set to whatever you want or whatever it is as the teacher you might be teaching. The fact of the matter is, though, this took mere seconds to produce. And for students who otherwise take, let's say, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour to, to transcribe, highlighted information into an outline, this can be the difference between a student finishing the work or not starting at all. You mentioned about those multiple means of engagement. Being able to engage the student in learning is a lot easier when they are struggling as much as they might otherwise be. Now, this outline that you are seeing is a text document. There is nothing to stop me from highlighting here, removing highlighting. I can type and add my own information if I wish. I can even get dictionary definitions of vocabulary words and copy and paste the definition into the document. So, for example, anywhere, let's get to the dictionary. Here is our definition. I'm going to just move to one side here. And so I may decide that the second definition actually is what I want. So if I'm comfortable with keyboard shortcuts, I can use them. If I prefer to go through the menus and choose the option for selecting and copying, I can do that. If I'm using speech recognition, I can be using commands to actually select 
text and to copy it and so on. Or, as I'm going to do in this case, I can select my text with my mouse and then click and drag and bring text into my outline. And you'll see now that what was once in the definition is now in my outline document. And also, my own. You can also my, my own, own words. words. And so Kurzweil is, uh, is working there. It's actually speaking out the words as I type. It speaks the sentence after I've made, uh, or inserted rather, a uh, period symbol, uh, an exclamation point, or a question mark. And uh, um, we'll, then, we'll then read that back to us. One, I can save this document. That's very, very easy. So I can just do File, Save, and go ahead and just call this uh, Outline. Go ahead and save. So that document now is saved. That's done. I can close and come back to that document some other time. Now, if I want at this point, I could then remove all of my highlighting by using the Erase Highlight um, button. So that's gone. I'm now back to normal, and I, I can now do other things. So I'm before about instructional notes. There are actually different ways that we can provide instruction to, for students. Uh, whole class, clearly, is, is, is the traditional route. Another option, though, is to actually add instruction to the document itself. So the sticky note, when I click, and then inside my document, it prints me with a bright yellow rectangle. Int I can engines for my. I type instructions for my students. So I've got the sticky note. Now, the instruction actually could be asking a question. It could be asking the student, you know, find the main idea and supporting detail in, on this page and highlight the text. Um, if I wanted to, I can click and drag and move that sticky note anywhere on the screen that I want. So it's great for actually adding captions to, to pictures or images or to provide that sort of instruction if I need to. Uh, also, if I was asking questions, nothing to prevent the student, or the teacher for that matter, from writing text and actually dragging that text into the sticky note itself. The reason this is important is because when it comes to extracting, instead of extracting highlights, if I were to extract notes instead, I get a document, except this time it tells me which page number I was on, which sticky note number I'm using. Obviously, in this case, I only have one sticky note. And then it actually shows the text that I had both typed and copied into that note. So as a study as a study guide, if you had sticky notes perhaps in the margin of a document, with students able to just very quickly copy and paste or drag and drop information from the document into that sticky note and then extract their information, it's just another means of getting the information that they need. Okay, so that sticky note, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that for right now so it's out of the way. And what I'm then going to show very quickly is the voice note. So with the voice note, I'm again going to click down inside my document. This time it opens up a recording dialog. So I'm able to record my voice uh, speaking. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a try here. So it is a demonstration of Dave Bradburn providing an instructional note for his students to listen to at a later stage. So I click and voice note symbol. Now again, just like our sticky notes, I can move this around the document. So I'm going to move it inside the into the main body of text here. And if I were a student and, and came across this uh, this image, I can double click I'm actually kind of reading back, so I'm not sure if there's something wrong with my microphone, so I apologize about that. But suffice to say that what should be uh, playing back at this point is a recording of me speaking, just as you heard me say before. The student can uh, add their own words to these recordings. And because it is a simple recording, you can also use it for recording yourself speaking in languages other than English. So it's not to be fused with speech recognition. This is not Dragon Naturally Speaking. It's just making a recording of someone speaking. So let's actually close this document. 
And what I now do is I open up one of our sample documents because I have a quiz document. So this is just our sample documents, but it could be any worksheet or test or quiz that you have seen uh, within um, schools or even, even higher education. One student is required to kind of fill in blanks. The document has a good number of those. It also has some multiple choice questions towards the end of the document so that I can show you how we might answer these types of questions. So first thing is I want to actually fill in these blanks, but if I click on the document and start typing, nothing actually happens. And that's because when Kurzweil 3000 presents uh, information, especially things that have been scanned or otherwise converted electronically, the documents are all images, which means everything is protected. Good thing, because it means that your students are unable, to, for example, to select all the text and then delete it by mistake. Using another button on our toolbar in the Study Skills toolbar, we have fill in the blanks. I can select that, and what Kurzweil 3000 now does is actually insert text boxes into which I can type my answers or my Needed. information. Brown. I can go ahead and enter a date. December. One. The first 2011. Now, in addition, so in the case where we have these answer true or false, I can, I wish, just select the answer and drag and drop that right into the box. So I don't even need to, uh, to type anything. And then only with the multiple choice, if I wanted to, I, my advice, you can either go with the highlight and just come come down here and just select the answer that you believe to be correct. Option, and I'm going to do this with question number eight here, is I can select the answer as I've done here and then click and drag the selection just to one side. And it actually creates a copy of the text that we just highlighted and places it right next to it. So if we were to then print this document, it would come out with all of the um, the things that it added. So highlighting text that's here, all of the text, boxes would be present uh, in the document. Again, all about engaging the student in the learning process and making things easier that would otherwise be a big struggle. Okay, so that, that at least now concludes the, the study skills side. So I'm going to hide the study skills just for a moment. I'm going to close this test document and once again introduce you to the writing toolbar. Right now, everything is grayed out because we don't have a document open. If I was to click New, you'll see the writing toolbar then comes to life. So I'm going to quickly just kind of go through these first couple of options because you'll know them if you've used any other kind of editing tool like Word or WordPad, something like that. So, of course, we can change the fonts, the size. There are things like bold and italic, the text alignment, line spacing, and so on. Now, the special parts of Kurzweil 3000 really start here. And you'll see some kind of yellow, yellow gold uh, buttons here. These are all related to the writing process. For example, if I have no document open at all, one button that is visible is Start Writing. And if I click that, it asks me, okay, what would you like to write? So I can create, a, I can do a brainstorm, so where I have kind of visual graphic um, mapping of my thoughts. I create an outline. So make the one that you saw me create before based on the highlighted text. Or I have a new draft document where I'm going to just do a straight composition and be typing. Do so from a blank document or I choose from a template. So let's actually stick with brainstorming for a minute because this is a really exciting part of Kurzweil 3000's writing process. So I click from template. I click OK. And we have a series of templates here. So if cause and effect was something that we wanted to work on in class today, I can choose that. I click OK to select it. And what is presented to us is a pre-populated um, image uh, of everything that you need in order to complete this task of writing about cause and effect. In every case, example, where we have this green box here on the topic thesis statement, on the box and then find that I actually have some some notes. And so this is where I can actually get instructions on what this let's listen to this. State problem, situation or 
circumstance, a brief summary of the main effect S, and the person, people or thing that is affected. So, it's, you know, again, those can be repeated. You can have read with different voices, what, what have you. But it really kind of helps the student, uh, you know, especially if they're working independently. Or perhaps you've got a student who's using Kurzweil 3000 at home to complete a homework assignment. And if you're not there to uh, to, be, to be helping them uh, with questions and so on, and perhaps mom and dad are, are, are available to help them right now with homework, being able to kind of add this sort of instruction uh, is very, very helpful and something that you can do to uh, virtually any document that you happen to open in such a one of the things that I should point out is that if I select text and just um can hear and just say Kurzweil Kurzweil three thousand presentation presentation All right so change the the topic thesis now but look what happens as I go through these buttons so right now I'm in the brainstorm view as I move to the right to the outline view. Uh, I can now the outline view, but look what's happened. Everything that I had typed or modified in my brainstorm has now been added to the outline. And it goes just the same way in reverse. So, for example, you know, if type in speak while typing. Speak. Typing. And go back to the brainstorm view. Notice that speak while typing has now been populated in the first of our yellow boxes at the top here. If you're a linear thinker or more of a graphical um, learner, you can choose the approach that you find most effective for your learning style. The, ob the objective here, though, is that once you've finished with your outline or your brainstorm, is to then come to the split screen mode. And this is where you actually have your outline on the left. It's not going anywhere. It's going to remain there until we get rid of it. And then on the right is the draft area where we can start writing. So this is where I can type. This is where I can type. And, and now what I can do is actually select from my outline and drag the text actually over to my document here. And so I'll just correct the, uh, the capital S here. Sentence. This is where I can type and speak while typing. Uh, and so once I'm done, let's assume that I've finished with my outline, I can either just by clicking the, the gray X here on the dividing line or by switching to the draft view, I can actually hide my outline and, um, uh, you know, obviously go back and list my work if I want to and then hopefully when I'm done, save this work and or print it out or email it to my teacher, what I need to do. Um, now, if a mistake, Let's see. there is a mistake. So uh, I deliberately typed uh, a mistake here by putting a, a double S in the spelling of mistake. Um, but it's a nice way into some other tools in the program, namely spell the document. So when I click spell check, at the beginning of my document, click spell check. Uh, it, it obviously finds the mistake uh, in the spelling, and I can click on the suggestion. Mistake. Mistake. Mistaken. Mistake. I can choose the correct version, and you'll see now corrected my work. And if the student had followed to the right one step further and went to the review writing stage, you'll know that, uh, and these are just our defaults, you can change this review checklist if you wish, but look to your written work. Very, very important. Then we ask we ask these students check the spelling, check punctuation, and so on. And you notice that as I mouse over any of these things, uh, a series of, of um, notes here below the list, uh, reminding the student how they can uh, access this particular tool. Suffice to say that if you would like to have those messages spoken as they appear, that is an option in the course as well. As well. So that concludes the. Uh, the draft mode, and then one thing to if say. There is a mistake. Okay, we'll say then before we're done with writing, is this word prediction. So we've added word prediction into Kurzweil 3000. Actually, it's been there for all the entire time Kurzweil 3000 has been a product in existence. And then as I type, as I 
ones is first of all I've, I've actually clicked the little red pin inside my word prediction window so it actually follows along with me uh, I can unpin and then place the word prediction box so if I do this and just come down here uh, it will stay put now so if I if I then starting anything else you'll see it doesn't actually move however based on the letters that I am typing in a, a certain set of words are going to appear in the list click on a word that, that, uh. you'll notice that some words are highlighted this generally is because it is a special vocabulary word in this case this is a homophone and if I click on this word there relating belonging to them they are boots in the clouds and a definition and and sample sentence is, is is spoken out loud. Now, whenever I hear that uh, additional information, I can double click to see it because it will then variably show me rated words, as 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 I'll show you here. T H E I R there, being or belonging to them, they put their boots in the closet. And right about this is again, you see the uh, the related words on the there. left here. T. So I can go there. along and T. then insert. There. Is now inside my document now. Clearly, it wasn't the right word uh, within the context of what I was about to type, but um, at least it shows you what that what that's like. Now, with the word prediction, it is possible to train the word prediction. Uh, so, if there are documents you have created in the past, or more importantly, the student has created in the past, they are able to have the word prediction learn um, some of the special vocabulary they're using, learn how they write, that sort of thing. Includes the the writing portion of Cosmo 3000, and I'd just like to spend a little bit of time um, on three other things before I move to Firefly, the web-based solution. The uh, first thing to say is that there is an audio, in fact, I need to just quickly open up a file here so I can um, straight this. So file menu, there's an option here for creating audio files, and this allows us to create uh, either an MP file, a WAV file, or a DAISY2 file, so that you can then play these files back later with a uh, an audio player. So, for example, if you were doing MP3, you might choose to save things and play them back on an iPod or an iPad. Uh, I'll do WAV files for uh, for non-MP3 supporting players, and um, and of course DAISY2 uh, for, for one of the many um, DAISY players out there that exist. Notice the integration with both iTunes and Windows Media Player, so you can actually create playlists for the audio files that you may create. And when I click OK, uh, it goes off and creates that document in the background, and it's being made into an audio file as we speak. Before I do read the web, I show you one further thing, and that is that I've got this document now. I showed you before how I could go ahead and save this document, and I was at the time saving it locally. But uh, in this instance, I'm using Kurzweil 3000 version 13 Web License Edition. Web License Edition means that we actually do require an internet connection to use Kurzweil 3000. It's actually, um, in fact, I'm going to apply it. It was about load iTunes there. It's actually using the internet to access the license. And the advantage of this is that it means that for a user of Kurzweil 3000, where at home, school, public library, an after-school program, what have you, as long as the computer they're at has Kurzweil 3000 web license installed, both Windows or Macintosh version, it doesn't matter, they will be able to access their materials because we provide you with unlimited cloud storage space. So in this case, I'm going to save to library. I'm going to choose that option out of the file menu you now. And uh, now, I'm logged in as a teacher, I should point out. So what I'm seeing here are other uh, teachers uh, in my in my school. I have a private folder, and within the private folder, the only people that can actually look in there is myself and anybody that is above me from a hierarchy point of view. So if I'm a teacher, my school principal uh, would be able to see this. A district administrator would be able to see, that, see what's inside that private folder, but none of my fellow teachers would be able to see it. And so it's for students. Students also have a private and public folder. Teachers can always see inside all the student folders, but only the student themselves can see what's inside their private folder as far as all students are concerned. So in my public, my public folder is where I save this Firefly brochure. I'm going to save, and so that file is now being uploaded to the Internet. 
So that's done. And uh, what I'm now going to do is to segue then into the internet. So first of all, let me just, uh, make sure that my file is set to use Internet Explorer. That's what I'm going to use my browser. It does also work with Mozilla Firefox. Click on Read the Web. And at that point, what Kurzweil 3000 will do is open up my browser automatically. And so, so here we are. Um, and conveniently, I'm going to actually just kind of close down my other instance of Internet Explorer. So conveniently, I've actually uh, set up my Internet browser to default to the Firefly login. This is, again, the web-based program that I was saying earlier. And so if I click inside the uh, document and then click on the read button down below. The district AT specialist, Firefly will provide the teachers and students with a web-based solution that will make delivering accessible content fast and easy. She reads and highlights um, directly inside the web page that I happen to be at. Now, though, is the login to Firefly. So let's forget Kurzweil for just one second, and let me go ahead and log in. And password. I'm going to go and click Go. This is going to log me in now to Firefly. Now, I'm at that folder, right? This is on the Universal Library, so I'm going to click on Public. And here's that Firefly brochure that we uploaded from Kurzweil just a moment ago. I'm going to go ahead and open this document again. And everything that I'm doing here is, is happening online. The thing installed here, I could be logged in on a Macintosh computer. I could be using Safari, uh, Explorer, Chrome, Firefox. It doesn't really matter, but there's our document. And, uh, as you'll see, uh, the document itself looks just like it did in Kurzweil. If I come in and click, I've got a read button at the top of the screen or in the window. Firefly provides anytime, anywhere access to digital. And so you saw in Kurzweil, we have dual highlighting. And suffice to say that the functionality in Firefly right at this second is some basic as compared to Kurzweil 1000. But the great thing is that, uh, well, first of all, it hasn't even launched yet. That will happen in the, uh, the beginning of 2012. And when it does launch, we'll actually be on a monthly release schedule, which means that as improvements are added and uh, become uh, they will just become a vis they will become visible to the customer. So uh, there's nothing else that has to be installed. It means that you could be running this on a thin client uh, installation as well, or you could be with PCs or Macs in school, at home. It doesn't matter. Uh, as far as the options are concerned, you know we of course uh, change the speed and everything to do with kind of how how big things are, how fast things speak, which voice we're using, that sort of thing. We do have the option here to position the, uh, the toolbar for Firefly at the bottom of the screen versus the top. Very helpful if you are using Firefly in a classroom with an interactive whiteboard and have either younger students or students who are in a wheelchair and can't reach the top of the interactive whiteboard. This way, if I select bottom and move away, you'll see that the, uh, the options then now appear at the, at the bottom of our browser window. I'm going to put them up to the uh, the top end right now. Uh, we of course have um, you know other things for translation and dictionary and and of course making things bigger and smaller as well. But the the great thing is that everything that uh, we have in our library is is available to us as well and from Firefly. So this is the future of Kurzweil 3000. I mean you've certainly seen the latest of Kurzweil 3000. It's going to be around for a long time to come. But we increasingly are seeing more and more of our customers wishing to switch and make the move to web-based solutions instead because it doesn't require their IT departments to install anything. So uh, we forward to getting into more detailed presentations of this program as we enter 2012. But for now, this concludes the presentation um, of uh, Kurzweil and Firefly. I'm going to go back to... Uh, to Kurzweil, uh, which is where we started. Uh, if you do have uh, any other questions about the, the, the program or indeed about this presentation, you can contact our, our company by visiting our website at kurzweiledu.com. And specifically for Firefly, there's a website called fireflybykurzweil.com uh, where you can learn information about that, sign up for a free trial, that sort of thing. 
So thank you very much for your attention to this presentation and enjoy the rest of your day.